Come and leave it there. I was down with the no way up, and I needed some help. Everybody breathing but not living, just existing. Well, and I needed some help. Somebody told me that Jesus will set you free. I tried it for myself and now I know what he did for me.
we have a reason to rejoice. So mothers, we love you. We honor you this day. Um, you are close to your spirit. It's close to, it's that mother's love that's close to that God the Father love. So uh, we're going right into the word of God today. And I'm going to read a text that I need you to kind of absorb. This is a powerful word. Whenever we go to the Psalms, uh, all of us, Psalms, we have a favorite Psalm. Psalms are those books that raise us up, lift us up, and take us to a new place. But let's, let's look at Psalms 116. Psalms 116. When you have it, listen intently. I'm not going to rush through this. I want you to hear these words. The psalmist was in a place of where there needed to be an expression made that kind of turned us Flip the switch in his life. Listen to something. I love the Lord, for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. The cords of death entangled me. The anguish of the grave came over me. I was overcome by distress and sorrow. Then I called on the name of the Lord. Lord, save me. The Lord is gracious and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. Our Lord protects the unweary. When I was brought low, he saved me. Return to your rest, my soul, for the Lord has been good to you. For you, the Lord, have delivered me from death, my eyes from tears, my feet from stumbling, that I may walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I trusted in the Lord when I, when I said, I am greatly afflicted. In my alarm, I said, everyone is a liar. What shall I return to the Lord for all the goodness, for all of his goodness to me? King James says, what can I render for the Lord for all of his benefits toward me? For as long as the Spirit of the Lord will allow, we're going to speak from this thought. The big payback. The big payback. Oh, God, this is turning into such a terrible day. What if things want to get better? I just can't take this. Lord, when am I going to catch a break? Everything seems to be going wrong. I'm not complaining, but I am just really tired. What are you listening to? Why did I decide to start that song there? Because you're listening to the unconscious whining. You're listening to the daily expressions and ultimate confessions of an ungrateful person. A person who focuses on the bad instead of the good. You know what I'm talking about? A person who never seems to see any good in their situation. A person who rather blame other people than fight through their struggles and their troubles like everyone else does. A person who focuses on what everybody's doing to me. Look what they did to me. Look what I'm doing. And they get to the point where they're just a miserable person all because they are un grateful. And what gets me about ungrateful people is it seems to slip their mind all the good God has done in your life. I'm talking to you right now. Think about it. You're sitting there now. I don't care what the problem. I don't care how big the problem. I don't care what the struggle. The fact you should look at right now is with all of that happening, with everything going on, you still are sitting in this place where God, somebody, he brought you, you're here by some reason, 
It had to be the power of God. What I'm saying, when you're an ungrateful person, you forget all God has done for you. If this is you, if you're the one I'm talking to, let me explain something to you. By being ungrateful, you're missing one of the greatest powers, one of the most divine attributes, one of the uh, most powerful forces we have access to. And that is the spirit of gratitude. Gratitude. Just being grateful. Just recognizing what God has done, where God has brought you from, thankful for where you are, thankful for what's going on. Why would you spend all your day, all your time, even get ready to come to, you know, be a part of this worship service? Why is the first thing in the front of your mind what's going wrong and not being grateful for where you are? See, ungrateful people miss something. You know what you miss? You miss the fact that it could have been worse. You miss the fact that there's somebody out there who is doing worse. And that's why you need to realize that if you grab a hold to this spirit of gratefulness, it puts you in a place of power. It puts you in a place of, of, of where you are stronger and healthier and you are have more peace. You have more joy. When you're grateful, you can conquer any spirit that's attacking you. When you're grateful, you know that God is in control. When you're grateful, you don't have time to be fearful. You ever sat around and just said, thank you, thank you, and been thanking God? I dare you, I challenge you this morning, I challenge you right now, that if you would just begin to say, thank you, thank you, come on, you're going to knock some demons off. You're going to knock some darkness off. You're going to get some spirits out of your room. Do you realize all you have to do, if you ever want to get to the place that you recognize the power God has given you, is just be grateful. You got to learn how to tell God, I, I trust you, because gratitude uh, can do powerful things. It takes away illness. Um, Solomon said in Proverbs 17, 22, a merry heart doeth good like medicine but a broken spirit dries the bones. What? You sitting there telling me, I don't know why I don't have power. You sitting there telling me, you don't know why you're not strong. If you're allowing an attitude to seep into you that is not an attitude for gratefulness, if you don't realize I got a lot to be thankful for, then you dry your bones up. And you know what this comes from? Come on, I, I discovered... I've discovered the secret to failure. I've discovered the secret to, to walking in darkness. I've discovered the secret to being up one minute, down the next minute. I've discovered the secret for walking around with all the power in the world, not being able to handle the slightest trial that comes your way. Here it is. It's because every time you come in God's presence, you come to get something. You never come to get it. You come, it's always, what am I going to get? What, what you going to give me? The reality is when you become an ungrateful person, it's because you get to the place that all you're ever worried about is what you're going to get. It is, it is you're being driven by your fallen nature. Come on, think about it. I hope so. sure hope the preacher preaches something I can get. I sure hope the word comes forth to bless me. When are you going to come in God's presence to bless him? to bless God. You get God's ear. You will get God's attention better by worshiping than you do by crying. I know sometimes God answers the cry of a contract spirit and a broken heart, but if you become a worshiper, God always finds a way to get to a worshiper. I know there's some people like me, you have worshipped your way out of some of the most trying circumstances in your life. And do you know the secret to worship is you don't even feel like worshiping half the time. But you do it because you're grateful and you know what God has done. It takes away the fear and the struggle. So real, real worshipers or grateful people realize something. You should be thankful for every good moment you had. Try that. Be grateful for the night you did sleep through. Be grateful for the day you were able to pay your bills. Be, be grateful for the time you did have enough money to, to do what you needed to do. Be grateful for a day your children had a good day. Be grateful for those moments because every good and perfect gift comes down from heaven, from God. So if I'm grateful for those moments, I realize something. I owe God a debt. 
I need to pay God back for all he did. Watch the flip here. Watch how I turn here. If I become the person that doesn't want to always run up to God and grab everything, but see what I can give God. If I become the person that flips that thing around and say, I'm going to live my life paying God back, all of a sudden God will strengthen me with what I need to pay him back. And the big payback, the title of this message, what this psalmist is going to show us, the big payback is when you recognize that I need to live my life walking and pleasing God and get off of the complaining train. Oh, I'm telling somebody right now, a blessing is going to come your way. Many of God's children have missed their best blessings because they had no expectations of blessing God instead of always coming to God to bless them. Um, the story goes that uh, King Cyrus of Persia had captured a prince and his family. And when he captured his prince and his family, uh, the monarch came before them and told the man, he said, look, what would you give me? If I were to release you, he said, I'd give you half my kingdom. He said, what would you give me if I were to release your children? He said, I'd give you the other half of my kingdom. He said, what would you give me if I released your wife? He said, I would give you my life. King, there, the king, of, king Cyrus was so impressed that he let all of them go free. And on the way out, this prince was walking. He said, man, wasn't that Cyrus a handsome prince? Wasn't that palace beautiful in all its splendor? And he noticed that his wife wasn't talking back to him. He looked out at his wife, and his wife was gazing in his eyes with a look. That, that love look. And she was looking at him. And he said, what's the matter? She said, I didn't see Cyrus. I didn't see, I didn't see the palace. All I saw was the man who said he would give himself for me. That's the spirit I'm telling you you need. That's what this psalm is about. This powerful psalm, which concentrates, which leads us into verse 12, is about us being so in love with God because we recognize who he is that we just get enamored and saying, you know what? I wouldn't be where I am if it hadn't been for God. How do I pay him back? You want to tap into the riches? How do I pay him back? Look at verse 12. What? Psalm 116, verse 12. What can I render to the Lord for all of his benefits toward me? Look what the psalmist said. He first had to get himself in the position to understand all the benefits. Keeping power, benefit. I'm still here. Blessing power, benefit. Sleeping at night, benefit. Strength in my limbs, benefit. Breath in my body, benefit. Heal me when I'm sick, benefit. Supply Do you know gratefulness will help you when you are suffering? Somebody suffering, they better hear me. When you're suffering, your mind is on your suffering, brother. If you haven't got your mind on God, why are you suffering? Do, do you have an example, Pastor? Yes, I do. Go to Job chapter 13, verse 15. After all Job had been through, how do you think Job could say something like, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Job could say that. He had lost his family. He had lost his riches. He had lost his servants. He had lost everything he owned. And yet, Job was still grateful. Though he slay me, yet will I praise him. What, Job? What are you saying? Job was saying, here's the secret of life. God gave it to me. The Lord gave it. The Lord took it away. But here's what makes me graceful. So I'm going to get this. Here's a revelation. No matter what you lost, no matter what you're going through, no matter what is happening to you, Job believed if God took it, God got enough power. 
give it back. Hallelujah! That's the secret. God's going to give it back. So why should I get down when I know God made it, God gave it, and God can do it again? And now on that, think about Daniel in the lion's den for worshiping. Worshiping. Gratefulness. When you're a grateful person, it will keep you through a tough, hopeless situation. Daniel was in a hopeless situation. You don't think so? Hungry lions are hungry lions whether you're saved or you're not saved. And Daniel had to face some hungry lions. Think about that. And yet, he still opened his window and prayed. And it tells me, when you go to chapter 6, verse 21, 22, it says that King Darius loved Daniel. He was forced into putting Daniel in the lion's den. That's another Bible story. I don't have time. But we found out, and he ran to the lion's den the next day and said, Daniel, are you all right? And Daniel told him, he said, yes, O king. My God sent his angels to rescue me. Hold it. Hold up. Hold up. So God heard Daniel being grateful, refusing to close his window and stop worshiping, no matter how bad the situation was. God heard Daniel still praying, and he sent angels. Do you know what that means? When you are grateful, God can do a miracle, because God sent angels because of a grateful spirit. Some of y'all are sitting there waiting on a miracle, and you'll never you're going to. But if you ever learn to be grateful. Oh yeah, somebody getting a smile on their face right now because that's what's going to take your situation. The enemy does not want you joyful and grateful in God. He wants you messed up. And the most powerful statement of gratitude is John chapter 9 verse 27 when that man born blind the disciples said, who did make this man blind? Was it because of his, his, his fat? Did he sin or did somebody else sin? And Jesus said, no, it's for the glory of God. I, ooh, that would preach the glory of God. But anyway, you heard what happened. The scribes and Pharisees did not believe Jesus uh, uh, healed him. So they called him and said, you know, denounce this sinner when he would not. They called his parents. His parents said, no, he groaned let him answer because they were scared of the crowd and Pharisees. But they called this man, this unlearned man, back before them. And they said unto him, come on, this man is a sinner. This man said, look, I'm tired. As he said, sinner or not, I once was blind and now I see. He said, look, we're telling you. Tell us again what he did. That's when he really told him. Verse 27 is a powerful verse. I'm not going to stay there, but you need to hear this. He said, look, I told you once. You don't talk to scribes and Pharisees like that. I told you once. What do we to tell you again? He did not care. You want to be his disciples? They said, oh, man, they got angry. Who are you talking to? You don't know who you are. Because the reality is, once you get grateful, there's not a demon in hell that can hold you. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting on somebody to start worshiping right where you are in your house. So I'm waiting on somebody in your car to start singing the praise. I'm waiting on somebody to say, you know what? I gotta give, I got to start living the big payback. I gotta pay God back. Let's look at this text very quickly. We're gonna look at three things. The psalmist gave us the answer. He's gonna tell us how we can get. He asked a question: what can I give God for his benefits? What do I have that God would want? You're gonna find out. And he answers the question. He gives us some things we can give to God that keeps his power flowing to us and our power going back to him. So three things I want you to write down. We owe him for his supernatural love. We owe him for his supernatural care. And we pay him with service and gratitude. Let's look at it. Look at it. This psalm. The book of Psalms is interesting. The book of Psalms is interesting because the book of Psalms is divided into five books. And the fifth book of the book of Psalms goes from Psalms 107 to Psalms 150. But Psalms 113 to Psalms 118 are the halal psalms. Halal means praise psalms. But they're not like the Tehillim psalms. They're just not psalms that praise God just because of who he is God. These praise him because of what God has done. There's a time to praise God for who he is. But sometimes you ought to jump back and think back and praise God for who he is, for what he's done in your life. Because these psalms are the redemptive psalms. They are the 
psalms that were sung at the Passover, at the feast days, to, to remind us of what God has done. Every now and then, you got to remind yourself what God has done. Psalms 113 and 118. Psalms 113 starts these halal psalms. Psalms 113 tells us we ought to thank God for his wonderful work toward us. Psalms 14 tells us thank God for his exodus, for his deliverance. Psalms 15 says thank him for his mighty power. But Psalm 16 says thank him for his benefits. Every one of these halal psalms tell us a reason to be great, grateful and have gratitude toward God. And Psalmist said, first of all, let's thank him for his supernatural love. God's supernatural love. Come on, don't stop. This psalmist said, I love the Lord. Can you hear him hollering it out? It's like, it's like one of those moments that just dawned on you that you love him and said, I love the Lord because he heard me. He bit his ear down and heard my cry. I love the Lord. What the psalmist was, it's like he had an awakening. It's like every fiber in him said, that's what's holding me back. I don't realize how much I should love the Lord. I dare you to holler out, I love the Lord. It's what made the songwriter write, falling in love with Jesus was the best thing. I ever did, or, or it makes John Legend say, all of me loves all of you. Or, or it made the stylistic say, you are everything, and everything is you. Or it made Andre Crouch say, uh, how can I say thanks for the things you have done for me? To God be the glory. It's like, I get to the point where nothing else matters but my love for God. And he said, I love him because he first loved me. How do I know that? Because everything this son has said is said, I God loves me. You got some too. Think of that. He didn't have to rescue you. He loves you. God said you have history. You have uh, some, some facts in front of you. You have proof that I love you because there's some things that you know that nobody else does. As a matter of fact, I need to stop this sermon just so you can honor that. And I tell you, I tell you right now, demons can't stay in the room where you honor what God has already done for you. Nothing can stay dark when you start honoring what God has done for you. Think about if you were to take a 30 second praise this, say this is what the Lord has done, it would blow your mind because of what God has done and where he's at. It's like he's, I loved him because he first loved me. I'm responding to his love. He picked me up out the gutter. He, he loved me when I wasn't unlovable. When I wasn't lovable, he, he, he washed me off. Me, I know me. He said, but I love the Lord. He hollered, you know, I, I, I'm not the easiest person to live with. Uh, uh, and, and I got some flaws, a whole lot of them. And me and my wife have had a whole lot of fights in all of our years together. And a lot of those fights were my fault. But you know what? With all of that, I got to thinking as I was writing this song, I mean this sermon, when I was reading this song and writing this sermon, I got to thinking, do you know, it dawned on me, there's never a moment in a day that I can think of that has gone by that my wife has not said, I love you. Let me straighten it up. Yeah, she's been mad with me. Yeah, there were days she probably couldn't stand me. But do you know every time we get up or she leaves the house, I love you. She calls me on the phone. If she hangs up, I love you. We could have just talked. If she picks it back up again, I love you. I mean, sometimes it's like nauseating to me, but I'll say, love you too. But that's her nature. And I remember... This one time we had just hung up the phone because now uh, uh, we're taking care of our mother. So she stays at my mother-in-law's and she called me up and, 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 and said, I love you. And we just talked and she hung up again. I called her back with something. She said, I love you. And I started thinking of me. Now, let me tell you what happened. She was at my mother-in-law's. I was home. And, you know, sometimes when a person's not around and you're missing them, that, that love word, you, it hits you because I'm not a person that likes to talk about this. But I, I heard her say it again. I was saying she must really love me. And I remember she sent me a, a text, you know, with all the stuff, you know. And I remember texting back, which I never do. Kissy faces and hearts and I love you too. And I remember, it dawned on me at that moment how secure I was even though she wasn't there because that love was real. That's what the psalmist is saying. You sometimes may take God's love for granted, but you know you're secure. You know you're secure. You know what you mean? You know, come on, you've seen it already. You walk away and God don't let you go. 
You mess up and God pulls you back. You, you struggle and God says, I still want you. You're secure in that love of God. The psalmist is trying to let us know that real love is secure in God. So we love him because of his supernatural love. And one of the things that messes me up about that is God tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 35 to 37, I says, nothing can separate us from the love of God. I know we read that fast, but think about that. Nothing, sometimes I get worried, sometimes I get stressed, sometimes I struggle. God said, nothing can separate you from my love. Not tribulation, not distress, not persecution, not nakedness, not peril, not sword, nothing. Not life, not death, not angel, principalities, nothing. He says, as a matter of fact, we, we are counted all day as sheep to the slaughter. But then the verse says, verse 37, Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors. Why am I more than a conqueror? Go back up to the first verse. Because nothing can separate me from his love. I'm not conquering with my strength. I'm conquering in his strength. Why are you a conqueror? You better act like you know. Because nothing can separate you from the love of God as it's written. Don't miss it. It's because of his love. Look what the psalmist said in Psalm 2, verse 2. He said, because he has heard me, the sorrows of death encompassed me. Then I called on the name of the Lord, and he delivered my soul. That love that God has is a daily love. When I was growing up, I used to hear old folks say, you know, please say, may not come when you want him, but he's right on time. Uh, he's, a, he's a midnight hour God. He's an early in the morning God. You know, isn't that something? What we were saying is, God has daily love for us. Daily love means after he takes care of me on Tuesday, he has a brand new set of mercies and a brand new set of love for Wednesday. Daily love from God is I can get up in the morning and know that nothing has weakened God's love. That's why you shouldn't worry about what the enemy is saying or what's going on in your life because nothing has weakened God's love. And daily love means God has already made a way for you to get out of what you're going through. You heard the story of my appendectomy. For those that haven't heard it, I was, in, I was in college, way up in school, and nobody else was around. There were summer classes, and my appendix burst. I told the story about one of my friends showing up miraculously. That's not what I want to focus on now. Do you know that the day my appendix burst, listen to this, I had a hot appendix, there was a group of teaching doctors there. There was a, a, a doctor there who was a specialist in internal medicine, you know, dealing with kidneys and that, in that area. And he had other interns that he was showing around. And so the day my kidneys burst and I needed an emergency operation, God had the best doctor in that area, in the hospital, and that's the one that did my operation, daily love. When you escaped that accident, God had the right angel, daily love. When you, when you took something uh, accidentally and God preserved you, daily love. You better say daily love. Somebody ought to know right now, God got some love for me right now. And the psalmist said, he said, then I called on the name of the Lord because he talked about how I was in darkness and heaviness came upon me. Because not only does God have daily love, he has fighting love. God will fight for me. I just said something to somebody. The reason you haven't gone over, gone under, is because God fights to keep you. You're not even worth it, but God fights to keep us. It's like God will hold on to us and fight for us no matter what else is going on. We're the ones he wants. The worst. The, you, you see the kind of people God chooses. He fights for us to tell us that no matter what. I love you. Fighting love is spiritual warfare. When we go into spiritual warfare, you know, we got all these scriptures in us, and you think, well, I, I did this, and I've been preaching that. Do you know the reason you stood is not because of all those scriptures you know. It's because standing behind you is the anointing of the Holy Spirit. It's God filling you up with his anointing. It's God walking with Joshua and, and a shot knocking down the walls of Jericho. It's God running out before David, before he faced the giant. And when he clung the slingshot and he threw the rock, it was God who guided the rock to the right spot on his head because God is the fighter. He's fighting because he loves us. All we have to do is stand still and he fights that battle for us. You don't believe me? Think about what we say. For God so loved the world that he gave. No, you better back up. 
You better go behind that. Can you see Calvary? That's not some weak scripture. God so loved the world that he gave. It is not weakness to turn your back on your only son. Listen to me. Do you know the angels in heaven, when they saw Jesus being spit on, demons laughing, having their way, they were confused. With all the powers and, and glory of heaven and God himself looking down on his son, turning his back, thinking, and I know the devil must have been confused. Wait a minute. This same Jesus just cast me out. Healed thousands of people. And now he's letting us just run all over him. What is he doing that for? Because he loves you. He was fighting at Calvary's cross for your soul and mine. He was fighting for us. That's why he stayed up there. That's why he hung. That's why he allowed them to, 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 to put a crown of thorns on his head. That's why he bled. That's why he stayed there. Every time they stuck a spear in his side, every time they whipped him, he said, I'm fighting. So my child, my children, don't go under spiritual warfare. It's done with God when the sorrows of death compassed about me. That's a fighting love. And we sometimes aren't grateful. Remember the story of the prodigal son's brother? It was a man that had two sons. I think about him because he's the one that's like some of us. He's the one that, you know, gets entitled. He's the one that some of the reasons we get angry when we have to fight is we somehow think that we're supposed to have something instead of realizing that there is no easy successes and there is no easy failures. If you see somebody successful, they fought for it. If you see somebody who fails, it wasn't because of one big plot. It's because day after day, you just allow little things to build up till it led to a failure. And you didn't realize you had to fight. So you feel entitled. I'm the good one. Not so good. Remember, remember what happened? He heard the noise. He, he asked the servant, what's going on? He said, your brother has come home. And your father has slayed the fatty calf. And your father, and your father has threw a party. And your father, and the boy, can you see him boiling? And he said, come on to the party. I'm not going out there. Then the father came to get him. Read the text. I love this. He came and he said, son, why don't you come out to the party? He said, because that son of yours that ran off, spent his time with sinners, messed up, did all he wanted to do in the world, he comes back and you slay the fatty calf for him and you haven't slain any calf for me. And the father said something that I want everybody whining to remember. He said, wait a minute. Everything I have is yours. Say what, God? Come on. Yeah, you heard it. You, you are always with me. Everything I have is yours. God said everything I have is yours. There is a corresponding blessing because you haven't gone anywhere. But it doesn't mean I love your brother any less. But don't ever take my love for granted because everything, I'm always with you. Everything I have, you call for it, you got it. And that's how you made it this far. And yet we want to whine. It is his supernatural love that God has blessed us. We owe him because of his supernatural care. Look at the text. I love this. It says, verse 5, Gracious is the Lord. Grace and unmerited favor. Come on, follow me in scripture. Favor we did not deserve. God, the psalmist said three things in, that, in those verses there. He said, what I call three theological acts that God did. First of all, he said he gave us favor or grace. He said unmerited favor, grace. Think about something. You did the same thing somebody else did, and yet God still blessed you. While you're sitting there 
worried about what you don't have. Think about all the things you have that you don't deserve. Think about all the stuff that you've done and God didn't let you get caught. Think about the joints you smoke, somebody else smoke joints, they're addicted, you're not addicted. Think about the lies you told, God let nobody know about your lies. I know I'm getting all in your business. Think about the mess you have done since you've been saved and somehow God even said, Galatians, you're going to reap what you sow, but he hasn't allowed you to reap it. like I'm right, but I'm not all that right. Even though I complain like I'm right, there's days when I am dead wrong. But God said, I've imputed my righteousness to you. I like the fact that every time a demon looks down at me, he attacks me and then God shows up. Jesus shows up and says, oh, you forgot he covered by the blood. That's my child. He makes us righteous. Remember the children of Israel when they were escaping from Egypt and God instituted the first Passover and he put the blood on their Doorposts. Some of those Egyptians, some of those Israelites that were covered with the blood were complainers. They were sinners. They were, and we found that out when they got to the wilderness. And yet God still covered them because his blood makes us righteous. One of the things you should always shout and rejoice about, no matter what's going on in this world, no matter how bad it gets, this is not my home. This is not my fight. This is not the end. I always got another card to play. Put your foot on me, devil. I got another shot that'll knock you out. Put, tell me I'm not going to make it. I got another God that'll sit down and bless me. Somebody sitting here right now had times when you thought you were done. But God showed up anyhow. He gave us grace. He gave us righteousness and then mercy. Mercy said he held back what I should have gotten. That's his supernatural. We, we don't care. He, he, he cares so much for me that he shows it. And no matter what I do, he still cares for me. Um, there's a story of an old woman who was meditating on the banks of the Ganges River. And as she was meditating on the river, just got done talking to God, loving God and nature, this scorpion came down the river Bang, and was flowing with the tide of the river. And all of a sudden, the scorpion got stuck in a branch. And she saw the scorpion going down for the first time, going down for the second time, going down and drowning. So she reached in, grabbed the scorpion, but he stung her. She had to let him go, and it knocked her back when she got her balance. She saw the scorpion drown again. She grabbed him, and he stung her again. This time, her hand swelled. And blood started coming out. But this time the scorpion was going down for the last time. She grabbed him anyway and lifted him up. A man was going by and said, you fool. Why would you keep grabbing and getting yourself stung for that ugly creature? Ugly creature. Sinful. Ugly. Tell that us. Where do people want now? Sinful. Ugly. Come on. Think back to what you did. Sinful. Ugly people. God saved us. He kept reaching down. All they just because the scorpion has a fallen nature or a deadly nature, it should not, it can't uh, be so deadly that it stops me from acting on my nature. Ooh, that's what God said. Because I chose you, I don't care how bad you get, it can't stop me from acting on my nature, which is to preserve you, love you, and keep you. This woman said, I'm going to continue to be who I am, even if you don't ever be who I know you should be. God is saying, I care so much for you that I'm going to keep saving you, no matter what it takes. Finally, when we look at the psalmist, after the supernatural care, we get to verse 12. And he tells us in verse 12, um, we go through 7, 8, 9, we find out it's a return to the Lord. That when we become gracious and think about God, 
we can return to a place of rest. Some of you are so stressed out, your soul never found rest. Verse 7 says we find rest, we return to God. Verse 8 and 9 tells us because he delivered us and we'll walk before him in the land of the living. We'll stop, you know, doing these great big confessions, but I'll walk every day the best I can. I don't have time to go there. Some of us walk good when we suffer, walk good when we hurt, walk good when other people live and looking, but when nobody's looking, we walk like we want to walk. But a person who thanks God for his supernatural care says, I have to walk right even when nobody's looking. Ooh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And finally, Psalm said, I was greatly afflicted. I said, all men are lies. He got to the point where his affliction let him see, I can't get any help on this earth. But now I know who it is who's been keeping me. Verse 12, what can I give to God for all of his benefits? What can I render to the Lord? And then he answers the question, I will take the cup of salvation and I will walk before the Lord. I will take my cup of salvation. I will pay my vows to the Lord. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints. That's in there. Watch this. Here's what he said. Because I know about God's supernatural love and his supernatural care, I'm going to walk saved. I'm going to walk like I know God is able. I'm going to walk no matter what's going on. I'm never, ever going to allow myself to get to the point where I'm complaining and worried. Somebody drop that worry today. God had you tuned into this service so you can stop worrying because all your worrying will not bring you any benefits, but if you continue to be grateful, the benefits of God will rain down on you. God shows up for praises. God shows up for blessings. God shows up for those who pay their vow. What is your vow? I don't know what your vow is, but you owe God a lot. Somebody say, I owe. You know you owe God a lot. Right now, I think about I can't pay God everything back. And all he wants from me is a worship. All he wants is a praise. All he wants me to do is be grateful. Hallelujah. I take my time salvation. I'll take my suffering. I'll take my pain. I'll take my struggle. Because at the end of the day, God will make sure I'm victorious. Somebody doesn't hear me. You need to realize i got to pay God back. That's the secret. The big payback is to live every day. Worship me. Not complain, not struggling. Forget all that mess behind me. And give God my best. The big payback. Story goes that Mary, the queen of Scotland, used to run around with her among her people, and she never. I want to make sure I didn't miss. I want to get the scriptures. I want y'all to see something in this text that I did not want to miss. It's right there in there. I mean, I'm, I'm there. Mary, queen of Scotland, would walk out among her people. I want to get there. And she loved just being with them. And she wouldn't take her bodyguards. One day she walked out further than she wanted to walk in. The clouds came up quickly and it burst down with a downpour. She knocked on one of these houses and said, please. And the lady answered the door, didn't recognize the queen, said, can you give me an um umbrella? If you lend me an umbrella, I'll make sure I bring it back to you. The lady looked at this queen and didn't recognize her and said, Looked at her umbrella basket standing there right next to the door. She had a good one in the front and not so good one, but then she had a raggedy one. She looked at the lady and gave her raggedy one. When you lifted it up, the ribs were bent, the fabric was torn, but the queen didn't complain. She took the umbrella and left. The next day, a royal carriage pulled up in front of her house and a servant got out and said, the queen thanks you for your umbrella and told me to return it. She says, thank you. The lady said, the queen. She said, I gave the queen the worst umbrella I had. And she still thanks me. Don't miss it. You give God your worst service and he still thanks you. He's still gracious. But the lady was so upset because I had a chance to give him better service. I had a chance to give him my best. And I did not. And when I don't give God my best, I'm the one who loses. I'm the one who loses out. 
Take your cup of salvation. Give God your best. Worship God like you love him. Practice the big pay that. Every day you get up and say, what can I pay God today? I remember his healing. I'm going to pay him back for his healing. I'm going to pay him back. So that way you want your mind will never drift to the bad stuff. Because you'll always be thinking about paying God back. I owe you, God. Let's, be, let's end this where the psalmist started. I love the Lord. If you start your day there, you begin to pay him back. You begin to grow in more power than you've ever seen will come in your life. We actually, I, I, I want you to read that song and get blessed this week. The big payback. Get it in your mind. If you look on the screen, if you want to give to this ministry, it's right there before you. All you got to do is go to www.shallowbaptistchurches. You go to PayPal, go to give, you give a five, whatever. Go on and see what our ministry is doing. Please give because there's a lot of things we're doing. We're doing the vaccinations. We're doing our pantries. We're feeding. We're taking care of runaways. And those who, we have many, many multitudes. And I want to thank you because all of you have been great to this ministry. Continue to give. Right now, somebody listening to me. You've been listening to these messages. It's time you gave into this ground. When you do, God bless you. I'm telling you right now because great things are happening here at Shiloh. God bless you. This Pastor Duncan saying thanks for being here. Join us uh, this week. We have our 8 o'clock Word of Worship every morning. And then we're going to have a special 12 o'clock Bible study this week. Uh, our regular Bible study. We're restructuring on Wednesday nights. But there's so many messages you can get on. on uh, you can go to SBC Praise Church. Is um, All you got to remember that. That's our handle. And when you remember that, you can go to YouTube or you can go to Instagram or you can get us on Facebook. God bless. And remember, tell God, I owe. I'm going to pay you back. God bless you. Take it to him and leave it there. I was down with a no way up And I needed some help Everybody Breathing but not living Just existing Well, and I needed some help Somebody told me that Jesus Will set you free.